real income, inflation, and the real wages formula. What is real income? Real income is how much money an individual or entity makes after accounting for inflation and is sometimes called real wage when referring to an individual's income. Individuals often closely track their nominal V. Real income to have the best understanding of their purchasing power. Key takeaways. Real income, also known as real wage, is how much money an individual or entity makes after adjusting for inflation. Real income differs from nominal income, which has no such adjustments. Individuals often closely track their nominal Vs. Real income to have the best understanding of their purchasing power. Most real income calculations are based on inflation reported by the Consumer Price Index, CPI. Theoretically, when inflation is rising, real income and purchasing power fall by the amount of inflation on a per-dollar basis. Understanding Real Income Real income is an economic measure that provides an estimation of an individual's actual purchasing power in the open market after accounting for inflation. It subtracts an economic inflation rate per dollar from an individual's income, typically resulting in a lower value and decreased spending power. 1. Deflation of prices can also occur which creates a negative inflation rate. Negative inflation or deflation will lead to a higher purchasing power of real income. Two, real income differs from nominal income, which is not adjusted to account for fluctuating prices and living costs. Individuals often closely track their nominal Vs. Real income to have the best understanding of their purchasing power. Three, Overall, real income is only an estimate of an individual's purchasing power since the formula for calculating real income uses a broad collection of goods that may or may not closely match the categories an investor spends within. Moreover, entities may not spend all of their nominal income, avoiding some of the real income's effects. Real income formula. There are several ways to calculate real income. Three basic real income formulas include the following. Wages. Wages inflation rate. Real income. Wages E. One of inflation rate. Real income. One. Inflation rate wages real income. Inflation rate measures. All real income, real wage formulas can integrate one of several inflation measures. Three of the most popular inflation measures for consumers include Consumer Price Index, TP, the Consumer Price Index, CPE, values the average cost of a specific basket of goods and services, including food and beverages, education, recreation, clothing, transportation, and medical care. In the United States, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, publishes key P numbers monthly and annually. 4. Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index The Personal Consumption Expenditure, PC Price Index, is a second comparable consumer price index. It includes slightly different classifications for goods and services and also has its own adjustments and methodology nuances. 5. The CP price index is used by the Federal Reserve for gauging consumer price inflation and making monetary policy decisions. 6. GD price index. Deflator. The GD price index is one of the broadest measures of inflation since it considers everything produced by the U.S. economy, excluding imports. 7. Generally, the three main price indexes will report relatively the same level of inflation. However, Analysts of real income can choose any price index measure that they believe best fits their income analysis situation. Special considerations for investing. Many individuals and businesses invest a significant portion of their income in risk. Free investment products and vehicles that match or exceed the economic inflation rate to mitigate the effects of inflation on their income. Several risk. Free investments offer a return of approximately two or more. These products include high-yield savings accounts, money market accounts, certificates of deposit, treasuries, and treasury inflation, protected securities, tips. Beyond that, investors may be willing to take on slightly more risk to keep their income yielding at or above inflation. For more sophisticated investors, municipal and corporate bonds are often used for obtaining two returns, beating inflation and helping income to grow steadily over time. Real Wage Rates when following real wages, there may be several statistics to consider. A real wage rate can be a basic calculation of an individual's hourly, weekly, or annual rate after adjusting for inflation. Having an expectation for a real wage rate can be just as important as a career expectation for a nominal wage rate. Bulls Report The BLS publishes a monthly real earnings report, 
which can be helpful in keeping tabs on real wage rates. The May 2022 Real Earnings Report, for example, shows the real average hourly earnings rate across all surveyed workers on private non-farm payrolls at $10.96 per hour, a 2.5 vine decrease on May 2021. 8. The Comprehensive Bulls Report has been created using special methodologies. Individuals looking to calculate their own real wage rate may be better served by adapting the above real income formulas to their own individual situations. Real income formulas. For example, a mid-level manager with a nominal $60,000 per year salary might follow the CPI to calculate their real hourly, weekly, monthly, and annual wage rate. Suppose the CPI reported an inflation rate of 2.4. Using the simple formula wages chi 1 inflation rate, real inflation rate, real income, this would result in an approximate real wage rate of $58,594 relative to the period in which the $60,000 was calculated. Calculating real wage rates on an hourly, weekly, and monthly basis can be more complex, but still attempted. The mid-level manager could divide his nominal annual wage by the number of hours, weeks, and months per year with a subsequent adjustment. For a monthly assessment, a $60,000 per year salary would translate to $5,000 in nominal pay per month. Adjusting that by the CPI's monthly change, let's say of 0.1s, the $5,000 would have increased its purchasing power to $5,005. Other takes on the real wage rate might look at the percentage of real to nominal wages or the real Vs. Nominal wage growth rate. Cost of living indexes can also provide valuable information on real wage Vs. Nominal wage rate expectations. These indexes are used to make cost of living adjustments, COLA, for workers, insurance plans, retirement plans, and more. Purchasing power. Overall, inflation's effect on wages will affect the purchasing power of an individual consumer. When prices are rising in the marketplace, but consumers are getting paid the same wage, then a discrepancy is created which leads to an effect on purchasing power. This is why real income decreases when inflation increases and vice versa. When inflation occurs, a consumer must pay more for a fixed quantity of goods or services. Theoretically, this is why savvy investors seek to hold a significant portion of their income in investments with a 2 fee you or turn. In that case, with inflation at 2, they would be able to maintain their purchasing power at a constant level. For instance, assume a consumer spends approximately $100 per month for a total of $1,200 per year on food during a year when inflation is rising at an annual rate of 1. Also, assume that the consumer saw no change in their wages. A consumer with a $60,000 annual nominal salary would have lost approximately $600 of purchasing power over a year, or one cent per dollar spent, due to the effects of inflation. In terms of their food purchases, this means the same quantity of food costs them $12 more during the current year compared to the past year. Alternatively, if this consumer isn't following a strict food budget, they will likely spend approximately $101 per month or $12, $12 to get the same amount of food they would have bought in the previous year. Real interest rate. Definition, formula, and example. What is a real interest rate? A real interest rate is an interest rate that has been adjusted to remove the effects of inflation. Once adjusted, it reflects the real cost of funds to a borrower and the real yield to a lender or to an investor. A real interest rate reflects the rate of time preference for current goods over future goods. For an investment, a real interest rate is calculated as the difference between the nominal interest rate and the inflation rate. Real interest rate, nominal interest rate, rate of inflation, expected or actual, Key takeaways. A real interest rate equals the observed market interest rate adjusted for the effects of inflation. It reflects the purchasing power value of the interest paid on an investment or loan. It also represents the rate of time, preference of a borrower and lender. Prospective real interest rates rely on estimates of future inflation over the time to maturity of a loan or investment. Investors could earn a rate of return that's negative if the inflation rate is higher than the nominal rate of return on their investments. Interest rates. Nominal and real. Understanding real interest rates. While the nominal interest rate is the interest rate actually paid on a loan or investment, the real interest rate is a reflection of the change in purchasing power derived from an investment or given up by the borrower.
The nominal interest rate is generally the one advertised by the institution backing the loan or investment. Adjusting the nominal interest rate to compensate for the effects of inflation helps to identify the shift in purchasing power of a given level of capital over time. According to the time, preference theory of interest, the real interest rate reflects the degree to which an individual prefers current goods over future goods. Borrowers who are eager to enjoy the present use of funds show a stronger time preference for current goods over future goods. They're willing to pay a higher interest rate for loaned funds. Similarly, a lender who strongly prefers to put off consumption to the future shows a lower time preference and will be willing to loan funds at a lower rate. Adjusting for inflation can help reveal the rate of time preference among market participants. Special Consideration Expected Rate of Inflation The expected rate of inflation is reported to Congress by the Federal Reserve, Fed, among others. Reports include estimates for a minimum three-year period. Most expected or anticipatory, interest rates are reported as ranges instead of single-point estimates. 1. As the true rate of inflation may not be known until an investment reaches maturity or its holding period ends, the associated real interest rates must be considered anticipatory. It's important that investors bear in mind current and expected inflation rates when they research where to put their money. Since the rate of inflation will eat away at the nominal rate of return, avoid lower returning fixed income investments that could mean a negligible real rate of return. Effective inflation on the purchasing power of investment gains. In cases where inflation is positive, the real interest rate will be lower than the advertised nominal interest rate. For example, if an investment such as a certificate of deposit, ETCD, is set to earn 4 in interest per year, and the rate of inflation for the same time period is 3, the real interest rate earned on the investment will be 1i4. 3, 3. When purchasing power is taken into consideration, the real value of the funds deposited in the CD will only increase by once per year, not for then. If those funds were instead placed in a savings account with an interest rate of 1 and the rate of inflation remained at 3, then the real value, or purchasing power, of the funds and savings will actually decrease. The real interest rate would be 2 after accounting for inflation 1, 3. What is purchasing power? Purchasing power is the value of a currency expressed in terms of the number of goods or services that one unit of money can buy. It is important because all else being equal, inflation decreases the number of goods or services you can purchase. For investments, purchasing power is the dollar amount of credit available to a customer to buy additional securities against the existing marginable securities in the brokerage account. Purchasing power is also known as a currency's buying power. What is inflation? Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. The rate of inflation, or the rate of decline in purchasing power, is reflected by the Consumer Price Index, PI. KPM measures the change in an average price of a basket of selected goods and services over a specific period of time. The rise in the general level of prices, often expressed as a percentage, means that a unit of currency effectively buys less than it did in prior periods. Inflation can be contrasted with deflation, which occurs when the purchasing power of money increases and prices decline. How does a real interest rate affect investment returns? A real interest rate is the nominal, or stated, interest rate less the rate of inflation. For investments, the inflation rate will erode the value of an investment's return by decreasing the rate of return. For example, if the rate of return for bonds you hold is 6 and the inflation rate is 3, then the real rate of return will be 3, not 6. That's because the interest rate of 6 is adjusted downward by 3 to account for the unfortunate power of inflation to erode value 6 in 3, 3. The bottom line. The real interest rate is an interest rate that has been adjusted for inflation to reflect the real cost of funds to a borrower and the real yield to a lender or an investor. It reflects the rate of time preference for current goods over future goods and is calculated as the difference between the nominal interest rate and the inflation rate. Real rate of return. Definition, how it's used, and example. What is the real rate of return? The real rate of return is the annual percentage of profit earned on an investment, adjusted for inflation. Therefore, the real rate of return accurately indicates the actual purchasing power of a given amount of money over time. Adjusting the nominal return to compensate for inflation allows the investor to determine how much of a nominal return is real return.
In addition to adjusting for inflation, investors also must consider the impact of other factors, such as taxes and investing fees, to calculate real returns on their money or to choose among various investing options. Understanding Real Rate of Return The real rate of return is calculated by subtracting the inflation rate from the nominal interest rate. 1. Key Takeaways The real rate of return adjusts profit for the effects of inflation. It is a more accurate measure of investment performance than the nominal rate of return. Nominal rates of return are higher than real rates of return, except in times of zero inflation or deflation. Examples of real rate of return Assume a bond pays an interest rate of 5 per year. If the inflation rate is currently 3 per year, then the real return on your savings is only 2. In other words, even though the nominal rate of return on your savings is 5, the real rate of return is only 2, which means the real value of your savings increases by only 2 things a year. Considered another way, assume you have saved $10,000 to buy a car but decide to invest the money for a year before buying to ensure that you have a small cash cushion left over after getting the car. Earning five interest, you have $10,500 after 12 months. However, because prices increased by three during the same period due to inflation, the same car now costs $10,300. Consequently, the amount of money that remains after you buy the car, which represents your increase in purchasing power, is $200 or $200 or $200 of your initial investment. This is your real rate of rate of return as it represents the amount that you gained after accounting for the effects of inflation. Real rate of return Vs. Nominal rate of return. Interest rates can be expressed in two ways, as nominal rates or as real rates. The difference is that nominal rates are not adjusted for inflation, while real rates are. Two, as a result, nominal rates are almost always higher except during those rare periods when deflation or negative inflation takes hold. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, the profits from double-digit interest rates were eaten up by the effects of double-digit inflation. An example of the potential gap between nominal and real rates of return occurred in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Double-digit nominal interest rates on savings accounts were commonplace. But so was double-digit inflation. Prices increased by 11.25 in 1979 and 13.55 in 1980. 3. 4. Therefore, real rates of return were significantly lower than their nominal rate counterparts. So, should an investor rely on the nominal rate or the real rate? Real rates give an accurate historical picture of how an investment performed. But the nominal rates are what you'll see advertised on an investment product. Other factors affecting real rate of return. The problem with real rate of return is that you don't know what it is until it has already happened. That is, inflation for any given period is a trailing indicator, which can only be calculated after the relevant period has ended. In addition, the real rate of return isn't entirely accurate until it also accounts for other costs, such as taxes and investing fees. What is trailing? Trailing refers to the property of a measurement indicator or data series that reflects a past event or observation. It is usually attached to a specified time interval by which the data trail or over which that data trail or over which that data is aggregated, summed, or averaged. Trailing data and indicators are used to reveal underlying trends but can delay recognition of trend turning points. Trailing can also refer to a type of stop order used by traders. What is the difference between a real or a nominal interest rate? A real interest rate is an interest rate that has been adjusted to remove the effects of inflation to reflect the real cost of funds to the borrower and the real yield to the lender or to an investor. A nominal interest rate refers to the interest rate before taking inflation into account. 2. Nominal can also refer to the advertised or stated interest rate on a loan without taking into account any fees or compounding of interest. What is inflation? Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. A quantitative estimate of the rate at which the decline in purchasing power occurs can be reflected in the increase of an average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in an economy over some period of time. The rise in the general level of prices, often expressed as a percentage, means that a unit of currency effectively buys less than it did in prior periods. Wage. Price spiral. Definition and what it prohibits and protects. What is the wage price spiral? The wage 
price spiral is a macroeconomic theory used to explain the cause and effect relationship between rising wages and rising prices or inflation. The wage price spiral suggests that rising wages increase disposable income, raising the demand for goods and causing prices to rise. Rising prices increase demand for higher wages, which leads to higher production costs and further upward pressure on prices creating a conceptual spiral. The wage, price spiral, and inflation. The wage price spiral is an economic term that describes the phenomenon of price increases as a result of higher wages. When workers receive a wage hike, they demand more goods and services and this, in turn, causes prices to rise. The wage increase effectively increases general business expenses that are passed on to the consumer as higher prices. It is essentially a perpetual loop or cycle of consistent price increases. The wage price spiral reflects the causes and consequences of inflation, and it is therefore characteristic of Keynesian economic theory. It is also known as the cost push origin of inflation. Another cause of inflation is known as demand pull inflation, which monetary theorists believe originates with the money supply. Key takeaways. The wage price spiral describes a perpetual cycle whereby rising wages create rising prices and vice versa. Central banks use monetary policy, the interest rate, reserve requirements, and open market operations to curb the wage. Price spiral. Inflation targeting is a type of monetary policy that aims to achieve and sustain a set interest rate over a period. How a wage price spiral begins. A wage price spiral is caused by the effect of supply and demand on aggregate prices. People who earn more than the cost of living select an allocation mix between savings and consumer spending. As wages increase, so does a consumer's propensity to both save and consume. If the minimum wage of an economy increased, for example, it would cause consumers within the economy to purchase more product, which would increase demand. The rise in aggregate demand and the increased wage burden cause businesses to increase the prices of products and services. Although wages are higher, the increase in prices causes workers to demand even higher salaries. If higher wages are granted, a spiral where prices subsequently increase may occur repeating the cycle until wage levels can no longer be supported. Stopping a wage price spiral. Governments and economies favor stable inflation or price increases. A wage price spiral often makes inflation higher than is ideal. Governments have the option of stopping this inflationary environment through the actions of the Federal Reserve or a central bank. A country's central bank can use monetary policy, the interest rate, reserve requirements, or open market operations to curb the wage. Price spiral. Real world example. The United States has used monetary policy in the past to curb inflation, but the result was a recession. The 1970s were a time of oil price increases by OPEC that resulted in increased domestic inflation. The Federal Reserve responded by raising interest rates to control inflation, stopping the spiral in the short term, but acting as the catalyst for a recession in the early 1980s. Many countries use inflation targeting as a way to control inflation. Inflation targeting is a strategy for a monetary policy, whereby the central bank sets a target inflation rate over a period and makes adjustments to achieve and maintain that rate. However, the book published in 2018 by Ben S. Bernanke, Thomas Labush, Frederick S. Mishkin, and Adam S. Posen, Inflation Targeting, Lessons from the International Experience delved into the past advantages and disadvantages of inflation targeting to discern whether there is a net positive in its use as a monetary policy rule. The authors conclude that there is no absolute rule for monetary policy and that governments should use their discretion based on the circumstances when deciding to use inflation targeting as a tool to control the economy. 1. What is monetary policy? Monetary policy is a set of tools that a nation's central bank has available to promote sustainable economic growth by controlling the overall supply of money that is available to the nation's banks, its consumers, and its businesses. The U.S. Treasury Department has the ability to create money, but the Federal Reserve, also called the Fed, influences the supply of money in the economy, largely through open market operations, OMO. Essentially, this means buying financial securities when easing monetary policy and selling financial securities when tightening monetary policy. The Fed's preferred securities for OMO are U.S. Treasuries and Agency Mortgage-Backed Securities. 
The goal is to keep the economy humming along at a rate that is neither too hot nor too cold. The central bank may force up interest rates on borrowing to discourage spending or force down interest rates to inspire more borrowing and spending. The main weapon at its disposal is the nation's money. The central bank sets the rates it charges to loan money to the nation's banks. When it raises or lowers its rates, all financial institutions tweak the rates they charge all of their customers. From big businesses borrowing from major projects to home buyers applying for mortgages, U.S. Treasury V's. Federal Reserve, what's the difference? The U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve are separate entities. The Treasury manages all of the money coming into the government and paid out by it. The Federal Reserve's primary responsibility is to keep the economy stable by managing the supply of money in circulation. The Department of the Treasury manages federal spending. It collects the government's tax revenues, distributes its budget, issues its bonds, bills, and notes, and literally prints the money. The Treasury Department is headed by a cabinet-level appointee who advises the president on monetary and economic policy. The Federal Reserve is the central banking system of the United States and is run by a board of governors that oversees 12 regional Federal Reserve banks. Its primary goals are to regulate the nation's private banks and manage the overall money supply in order to keep the inflation rate and the employment rate stable. The Federal Reserve Board is accountable to the U.S. Congress, not the President. What is inflation targeting? Inflation targeting is a central banking policy that revolves around adjusting monetary policy to achieve a specified annual rate of inflation. The principle of inflation targeting is based on the belief that long-term economic growth is best achieved by maintaining price stability, and price stability in price stability is achieved by controlling inflation.